Thank you, Pablo. Good morning, everyone. So <clears throat> I'm the CEO of founder of Grablax Ventures, and I will try to give you some ideas of how to make money in 30 countries from one only office in Buenos Aires in Argentina. It's something difficult, but I will try to do my best. So Grablax Ventures is not a venture capital firm that invests in salmon. <laughs> It's a holding company that we created to have these four properties. So the idea is to think globally and then act locally. So these four companies are on the classified market. Sumavisos is the one that I will talk again in a few minutes. But then you have Uni, which is daily deals aggregator in 20 countries. You have Properati, which is a new company that we are launching this week. And it's a real estate for Latin America. And then we have lugares.com, which is a Yelp a guide per city in Latin America. So we have Sumavisos and Uni, which are uh, aggregators of classifieds in, uh, around the world. And then we have two different businesses that will work only in Latin America with its own brand. So now let me <coughs> uh, tell you a bit about Sumavisos and uh, what we do. So basically, the, the idea of Sumavisos is like a small Google only for classified ads. So we do it. We do the same that Google does, but we have to do partnerships with the local classifieds in each market. So far, we have over 1,000 classified websites that give us all the content in 30 countries. So the idea is the following. Five years ago, one of my co-founders had the problem to find a new house. So he didn't buy the newspaper as we did five years ago and then check with a pencil which properties are, are near your house. He did a small program that went over the internet and selected properties and put all together in an Excel file that you can see here. So that's a property that he found using his own system. So the idea is that he wants to solve his own problem. He solved the problem and also we realized that this is a problem that many people have in Argentina, in our city. So we built this, this first version of, this, of the site, not only for real estate, but we also have for autos and uh, jobs. So this is Martin's house after we, we have some money, <laughs> so he could play in the house. And so, we, so the first was a problem for Martin that, we, that he solved. The second was the problem for the city that we solved for Buenos Aires. And then we see we we told ourselves this is a problem that perhaps many people has around the world, not only in Argentina, not only Buenos Aires. And this graph, it's uh, you know Mapa Mundi, but Argentina is on the center because <laughs> Argentina thinks that <laughs> yes, we always think that we are the number one, Messi, Maradona, you know, uh, Del Potro, but we are not the center of the world. There are many countries, so. We have to solve this problem globally. <laughs> In Brazil, it was more funnier because Brazilian didn't like this chart. <laughs> Sorry, Rodrigo, for that. So the question is, where are all the internet users? So what we did four years ago, we went to Google Data Center. You have all this information, and you can build very easily this Google map with uh, all the users, internet users around the world. And the idea is that the bigger the, the bubble, more users internet are there. So Argentina is here. <laughs> we are not the center. <laughs> also, Brazil is very big, as Rodrigo told us. And then you have the US, you have Spain, Germany, and also India, and of course, China, which is the biggest country on internet users today and will be even bigger in the future. So the next question is, OK, I, I understand that, but what country is best to go first? If you can have a website that can go globally, which is the best country to go first? So the first analysis will tell us that you have to go to China. But China, as Rodrigo mentioned, the GDP per capita is not very big. And also Google doesn't work there. So perhaps it's not the best country to go first. So we make this Google Doc, which is the URL is over there. And we have a, a list of all the countries in the world, the number of internet users, and then we adjust that number regarding GDP per capita and the market share of Google. Because we know that if we want to make money online with advertising, we want to have Google as a partner. So with this new list, United States is the number one, Germany number two, 
United Kingdom three, France, Japan, uh, Spain, Italy, Canada, Brazil, and China is number 10. So if you, want, if you look only at the number of users, China is number one. But you've, if you take into account all these factors, China is number 10. <clears throat> so in four years, we are over 30 countries, eight languages, and more than 12 million users per month. And to do that, we have to deal partnerships with over 1,000 classified websites around the world for cars, real estate, and jobs in eight languages. So every day I receive email in Poland, in French, in Italian, every, every eight different languages, and I have to use Google Translate to understand what they want. <laughs> so let me give you some feedback of how we did this. So number one is let computers work for you. In many companies, the marketing guy or the marketing manager doesn't work to use a lot of technology because he will be out of work very quickly. <laughs> so as we are a technology company, we, want to, we love to use computers to work for us. So we have all kinds of APIs that we use for Google Analytics, Google AdSense, Google Docs, Google AdWords. Also, we have OpenX, which is an open source uh, at, at, a, at platform. Also, we, be, we build uh, prototypes with Go Mockingbird, which is a free app. You can use it online. So very easily, we can create a new prototype and test new things. And we have control panels that we did to control 30 countries in real time. And also, for sure, we use software that is 100% open source and hardware that is 100% cloud-based. So we don't need to spend money on hardware, neither uh, software. So number one, let computers work for you. Number two, let other companies work for you. <clears throat> so we do our core business. We have developers. We do the integrations. We have SEO ex experts, SEM experts, and also the quality assurance of the website. But all the, other re all the rest of the things that are not core to our business, we hire the best people we know. And these people has its own companies. Typically, it's a small company that will, you know, uh, admin our server, so it's, we don't have to figure out what happened with the server. It's 24-7 services, so that we pay them and they manage the server. So if you take to account number one and number two, you will have more users than employees. <laughs> so this chart shows that on year 2009, we were only four, and now we are, let's say, 15, but the number of visitors came from zero to 12 million. So to do that and to have a small team, you will need to use technology and you will need to use other companies work with you. Saying that, um, what we realized that the main risk was not on the product because at the end of the day, your product will be online. We have more futures, less futures. We spend more money, less, less money, but your website will be online. In Gravlax, we are launching Properati, which is a new real estate portal. And the website is very good. We did it almost from scratch. And it's amazing. But the problem now is how to create audience and then how to monetize. <clears throat> so if you, want to, if you want to make business online, you don't have to. The problem will not be the, the, the website itself. The problem will be how to create audience and how to monetize that. So to create audience, you have all the <clears throat> SEO, SEM, email marketing, blah, blah, blah. But you have to be very good at some of these to make to have a lot of audience, it's you cannot hire someone for a company to work at SEO or SEM because it will be core to a product at your company. <clears throat> so the second question is, how much money do you need? And this uh, a new book called Lean Startups and all that. But I think at the beginning, all is all the companies has to be lean because at the beginning <clears throat> you don't know nothing about your business. So you have to continue working with the less capital that you can. And then there is an inflection point when you have to say, OK, what do you want to do? I want to continue running this company organically, or I want to raise money and go faster. So for example, in Sumavisos, we almost take no money from, from investors, and we did it all organically. But now, with Properati, we are, we are heading this point, this inflection point, where perhaps we will need money. Because if you want to go to Brazil, to Mexico, open an office, you will need money. And also, please remember Hofstadter law, because it always takes longer than you expect. 
even when you take into account hostile law. <laughs> so if you know this, uh, it's one of the things that you need to know to start an internet business. Because basically, this chart shows the happiness of the entrepreneur and also the investors. At the year one, are all happy because you have the money, you have the, your family says you are a genius, you are the next Bill Gates, or now the next Mark Zuckerberg. Then year two, the money has gone, nobody is coming to your website, you're a loser, and the traffic doesn't come. The second chart here shows the actual visits per month to our Suma Visos in year 2009, 2010, 11, and 12. So the first one is just a joke, but the second one, it's, it's real. So the idea is that you have to wait for the spring of the third year. Or as we say in, in Argentina, you have to uh, wait to the winter to pass. It's uh, pasar el invierno. Because at the end of the day, if you continue working on your project and you remember this law, you will see light at the end of the tunnel. So this is the last advice I will give you <laughs> to, to keep calm and trying to take over the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.